Welcome. Thank you for coming today. This is a unique opportunity for all of us, including me and the players, Ken, um, to work intensely all week with um, the Smithsonian, um, their instruments, and the collection here at the Library of Congress. So normally you see our instruments in the wall cases, and they are set up differently usually. They have a modern bridge and strings. But what we have this amazing opportunity this week um, with the Haydn Academy, the Haydn 2020 Academy, um, to um, put bridges, Baroque bridges and strings on our Stradivari instruments as the Haydn 2020 Academy plays through um, the Haydn Quartet's Opus 9, 17, and 20. So this week-long event has been a collaboration between the Library of Congress, the Smithsonian, the Hungarian National Library, the Hungarian Embassy, Cornell University, and Henry Verlag, and Henry, Henry Verlag the publishers. Um, and these students, the fellows, who have been selected and have agreed to come here and play with faculty and work through um, concerts, and today, like an open um, session, working with Ken Sloak from the Smithsonian, and lectures from Haydn specialists. So it's, it's probably been a, an intense learning um, opportunity for everybody, including all of you. So I'm going to pass this over to Ken from the Smithsonian, Ken Sloak. Thanks, Carol, and thanks to the library for collaborating with us here. We did a project about, you know how it is, uh, as you get older, these things recede, and you can't really tell, but maybe 15 or 20 years ago, uh, when we had another opportunity made possible by another grant uh, to do a quartet workshop with the Juilliard Quartet and the Axelrod Quartet, our resident quartet at the museum, and about 20 students from all over. Uh, in that case, they were organized as quartets at their relative schools, and then they came here to get some coaching. But uh, we didn't really have the same opportunity of playing all the instruments. This time, um, the groups are not preformed because that would prevent the kind of coaching from the inside that our four coaches are doing. Uh, but it is a, a wonderful shared opportunity, and I'm so grateful to Carolyn, to whom I brought this uh, idea in the first place, that she was willing to go along with it. So uh, today, we're going to be working through uh, the Haydn Opus 20, number two quartet, we being Jacob Ashworth and uh, Yvonne Smith and Carmen Johnson Pajero, uh, using the strads. And sometime during the middle of this, we might switch the violin so they each get a chance to play. One thing that's really interesting is that the same violin in different hands can sound quite different. And uh, I think we found that uh, in this week. Not only, as Carolyn mentioned, not only are people playing these instruments, but the Smithsonian set of strands and the Smithsonian set of Amatis and another set of 18th century Italian instruments that have never been altered. It's also at the Smithsonian. So we've had a lot of opportunities for people to explore the sonic worlds. And for me, uh, it's very interesting to see some people who just kind of hone in on one instrument that really feels right. It's not the other instruments aren't great, but just that marriage is, is so much nicer. So enough talk, let's get some music. <laughs> Actually, I should introduce the instruments too. Um, we have here the Beth Stradivari from 1704, violin, and the Castle Barco from 1699. And these two violinists you might see switch about halfway through so they can each have a try at the two instruments. Ken is playing our Castle Barco cello from 1697. And the viola that we are playing today is our 1690 Tuscan Medici, which is on loan to us from the Tuscan Corporation. So let's go back to the top and play it over.
asked him. I this is, uh, well, could you, you're, you're here, so why don't you speak no, no, about it? No, 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 no. <laughs> Yes, it's, it's the Opus 20, number two of Haydn, a, a wonderfully invented piece, as almost everyone in the Opus 20 set is. Uh, this next movement is titled uh, Capriccio uh, and combines a kind of a recitative and free fantasy uh, with an aria and ends very inconclusively before spilling over into a minuet. <coughs> Thank you. 
Three of these Opus 20 quartets, including this one, end with a fugue. This one in four subjects, or one subject and three counter subjects.
there's a little time left, maybe we could try that experiment of switching. Can I get your A? Uh, that was, that was nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
feel is the difference? Uh, that, that one is extremely good at playing very, very quiet and really, really clear. Yeah. This one, though, has a, a lot more colors in the quiet. Yeah. So there's a, lot, there's a little more texture to the sound when it's quiet. But that one has this incredible ease. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's just, just a lot easier to play, but that one's a little more limited. This is a great moment to do on you. I mean, playing Sotto Voce like this <laughs> for so long and finding many different things to do is a real test of an instrument. Not to mention the player. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm so glad we did that on both of them. Um, do we have time to do the second movement? Mm -hmm. okay. The first movement again, actually, first movement. would be useful for a second. Or maybe a few more minutes on the table.